Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. This is episode 17, episodio 17. Hello Reza. Hello Craig. It's good to see you as always. Same here. You're looking very well today. Thank you. You too. Have you been busy? Quite busy Craig, quite busy. I'm trying to get things done before Fayaz is in full swing. Fayez is yes yeah, coming up in a few days. Maybe our listeners in in um, countries outside of Spain would be interested to know what the Fayez festival is all about. How, how would you how would you describe Fayez in one sentence? I'll say it in a word if you like. Noisy. No, actually, two words. Can I have two words? Bloody noisy. Organized anarchy. <laughs> Organized anarchy. But what yeah. happens? What happens during fires? Oh, you name it, it happens. What doesn't happen? The city uh, closes down. The city's. St- you can't really work in no. Valencia during the, the fires. Not in peace. Week. There are loud noises everywhere. Fires everywhere. Smells of food cooking everywhere. People drinking, dancing in the street, having a good time. It's a full-on festival, isn't it? Very it's full-on. Full it's it's total anarchy. Do it's you... great. It's really exciting. It's worth a visit, but do not come if you don't like crowds. It's not for you. <laughs> the kids, the kids like it. It's nice oh, for children. Kids love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very noisy. Lots of petardos. Petardos. Firecrackers. Firecrackers. And fireworks. Fuegos. Artificiales. And fireworks display. Fireworks displays. Castillo. Fuegos artificiales. Not castle in English, by the way. Fireworks display. Castle is Castillo. Castillo medieval. That's medieval castle. That's another thing. There are parades in the streets. Music bands. Marching bands from each barrio or neighborhood. Mm Mm-hmm. Costumes, yeah, which cost a fortune. Those beautiful Fayera costumes. They can be up to five, six thousand euros, can't they? Yeah, easily. Very expensive. Mind you, it's worth it. The Fayeras look fantastic. They look gorgeous. Mm-hmm. The hairstyle of the Fayeras is very funny. It looks really like Princess Leia out of Star Wars. The first episode of Star Wars. Yeah, yeah it does. Fayera. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the Republic Empress or Princess or whatever she is, she's a Fayera. <laughs> she's a Fayera. <laughs> do you enjoy Fayas? I do. I do. On the whole, 90% of me loves Fayas. But there's a 10% which, now that I'm getting old and a bit, you know, You're... hard to please, the noise can be occasionally a bit disturbing. Mm. You are getting old. That's true. And you live in the center of one of the most popular um, neighborhoods in Valencia for fires, parties, loud noise in the streets. Your That's whole right. area turns into an open market and. That's right. Um, Ruthafa neighborhood. Ruthafa, yeah. It's probably the most famous neighborhood as regards Fayas, although there are Fayas all over the city, but in Ruthafa, it's particularly busy. Are you staying here this year for... for no, Fires? I'm going to go and visit my mum. It's a pity. Um, You're going to I, Belfast, yeah? Yeah. I like the fires, but I've seen quite a few of my time like you, so mm-hmm. to miss a year from time to time is, is no big deal. Right. But I advise anybody who is interested to strongly recommend them to visit fires. They'll love it. If they can find a hotel during that week. It's always from the 15th of March to the 19th of March. Mm -hmm. There have been um, talks and discussions about making it shorter, I think. But um, between those dates every year, the 15th to to the 19th of March. Well, actually, you say making it shorter. But if I recall from the 1st of March, correct me if I'm wrong here, Craig, but I think... From the 1st of March right until the last day, the 19th of March, they have the mascleta in the in the Plata That's del right. Ayuntamiento. That's right. So for the whole of the 19 days of March, they close the main square in the center of Valencia, Plata del Ayuntamiento. They close it to traffic at 2 o'clock mm-hmm. every day and they have a mascleta. How would you describe the mascleta? It's a very strange concept for an English person. Fireworks during the day 
fireworks when the sun is in the sky. So you don't really see much, mm. but oh, it's really, really loud. And there's a rhythm to the way the fireworks go off. Um, I love Maskleta. I, li- I like it too. It's I really like it good. too. You can really feel the rhythm, the ground shakes, and there's a lot of pe- you can't move in the square. So many people crammed into a small space, and the sound echoes around the buildings in the square. Mm-hmm. And it's an incredible thing, it really. It lasts for about, what, 15 minutes? About 15 minutes, yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I think it gets longer as the fires go on. It gets yeah, longer and, and more louder. dramatic. Yeah. And they have guests to come from other countries like Italy, people who do the, this around the world, and they have competitions, I think, for the, the best uh, mascletta. If you like fireworks in general, visit Valencia. There's every month there's some excuse to have a fireworks display. But Fayez is like the most important time of the year mm-hmm. when there's fireworks every ten minutes. <laughs> we have some feedback this week, um, and a couple of uh, iTunes reviews. Some people have been kind enough to uh, write a review on iTunes for us. Brunos twenty thirteen. On iTunes says, Gracias por los podcasts. Mejorando día a día. Mi son, un, mi son de un gran... Sorry. Mi son de una gran ayuda. So thank you very much, uh, Brunos. And Copsos says, Es perfecto para aquellos que tenemos un nivel intermedio. And Maria Fajardo from Spain says, uh, Que fácil es aprender. Con ustedes. So thank you very much thank you. to those who have um, thank, you. thank you to those who have left reviews on iTunes. So let's begin with gramática. And this week, I thought Rosa, we could speak a little about the passive. El pasivo. Is it is it the same as the passive in Spanish? Would you say? Pretty much, yes. And More when, or less, yes. when would we use the passive in English? In what? Uh, why would we use the passive and not an active? Sentence. For example, why would we say um, fires are made in Valencia and not people make fires in Valencia? Better to use passive fires are made in Valencia because the important thing are the fires, not the people who make them. Right. So we make fires the subject of a sentence and use a passive verb. Fires are made. Obviously, People make fires. I mean, uh, giraffes can't make fires, and robots still can't make fires. Not yet. Tonight. Maybe in the future. So it's obvious that people make fires. So it's so obvious we don't need to say it. Just yeah. Fires are made in Valencia. Okay, let's practice a little then with some uh, playing around with tenses. I'll say an active sentence. Uh, try and say a sentence about fires, Reza, in the passive. For example, if I say every year Valencian people make fires. Every year fires are made by Valencian people. Yeah. Uh, and if I say um, as we speak, people are making fires. As we speak, fires are being made. In that sentence, I don't say by people because it's unnecessary. Yeah, it's not. We don't. We don't need to know. We, it's not. It's not necessary information. Um, okay, the future. Uh, next year, in twenty fifteen, I suppose Valencians will make fires. In twenty fifteen, I suppose fires will be made by Valencians. And I'm sure this year during fires, people are going to eat a lot of churros and chocolate. Yes, I'm sure a lot of churros and chocolate are going to be eaten. And I'm sure that many people sold lots of churros last year. Lots of churros were sold. And people in the street were selling petardos last year. Uh, Petardos or firecrackers were sold did you say past simple or past continuous i can't remember past uh, continuous ah people were selling okay sorry last year uh petardos firecrackers 
were being sold. That's right. Street, were being sold. Past continuous. Passive. And if you walk around Valencia on the 16th of March, um, the people will have removed the Fayas from the street. The Fayas will have been removed. That's future perfect. Right. Passive. Future perfect passive. And lastly, the past perfect. So we had recorded this before Fayas started because Fayas is really noisy and there are lots of bangers and fireworks in the streets and petardos. Reza, I'm really pleased we had recorded this before fire started. Uh -huh. So you're pleased that this podcast had been recorded before fire started, had been recorded. Passive. Yes. Past perfect, passive. Because now it's nice and quiet. Does it? Moving on to the vocabulary corner. And this episode, I thought we could speak about some sports vocabulary. One popular mistake with Spanish speakers is the confusion with practicar deporte, because many Spanish speakers translate that to practice yeah. sport. But you can, can't you? You can practice your backhand. Ah, exactly. But that's a particular element of a sport. So you repeat a skill or you repeat something in a sport in order to improve. Practice your serve, practice your backhand, practice your penalties in football. Practice heading the ball, repeat it and repeat it to improve. But normally the collocation with sport is to do. Do or play. Or play, depending right. on the sport. So let's think of examples of sports that you do. Do judo, karate, uh -huh. taekwondo. All Athletics. Those. Do the high jump, do the long jump, do the 100 meters, do the hurdles, do the marathon. And then play things like play football, play tennis, rugby, tennis, squash. Um, speaking of collocations, you can play a game, you can play a team, and you can play a sport like golf or tennis. What collocations can you think of with beat? Ganar. You can also beat a team. You can beat a team. You can beat a record. Beat a record. You know, a record like uh, the world record for 100 meters is held by Usain Bolt, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can beat that if you run faster. Faster than Usain Bolt. Batar. Yeah. G good luck to you. Good luck. If you can run faster than Usain Bolt. <laughs> Win a competition. Win a game. Win a medal. Can you think of more with win? Win an event. Win an event in the Olympics. Hmm. Win a heat. What about a heat in sport, Craig? I don't heat. know what that is in Spanish. The first heat, second heat, third yeah, heat. Like yeah. a, a ronda. Yeah, our heat is around, isn't it? Around, around. Una ronda. Yeah, yeah. Score, score a goal, obviously, in football. Um, we spoke about play and do... Um, there are some sports that you go and usually if you, I don't know if you agree they are sports that finish with ing yeah yeah so swimming for example you go you go swimming go trekking go running go jogging mm -hmm. not footing jogging mm -hmm. can you think of more go, ing go windsurfing go sailing kite surfing uh -huh. go snowboarding go snorkeling go diving mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, one thing I would point out about that: uh, you go plus ing swimming, etc. But when you're talking about sports competitions like the Olympic Games or whatever, you don't say go. For example, in the Olympic Games, they they have swimming events. Mm -hmm. They do swimming events, not go swimming. Not go swimming. Think I would use it. the phrasal verb take part in. Take right. part in an event. Take yeah. part in a competition. Go is only for, as far as I can see, leisure activities. Go cycling. What do you like to do at the weekend? I like to go cycling. But if your name is Bradley Wiggins, in the Tour de France, you don't go cycling. He competes. He cycles. He, com he competes. He cycles. He doesn't go cycling. So he no. competes and he takes part in an event. Yeah, would you agree with that? Absolutely. The goal plus ING, it's for leisure activities, I think. 100%. Yeah. 
Do you know the difference between a bat and a racket? Generally speaking, um, we talked about this before, actually. Did we? We did. A racket has strings. Oh, we have spoken about this. Yeah. Tennis racket, squash racket, badminton racket, but a bat has no strings. Baseball Cri- bat. Cricket bat. Cricket even bat. table tennis bat, because table there are no bat. strings. We did talk about that before. We did talk about that. Okay. But, so what? So we repeat it, so what? It's we, good revision. You, you could preface it by, do you remember? Do you remember? Okay. Name the sport, Reza. Um, what sport do you play or do on a court? Basketball, volleyball, netball, squash. What about a pitch? Tennis or court. Tennis, tennis court. What about a pitch? Football pitch, rugby pitch, hockey pitch. Good. Ring? Boxing ring, wrestling ring. Rink. 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 R I N K. Yes. Ice rink. Ice skating. So ice skating, um, speed skating, um, uh, ice dancing. Ice dancing, figure yeah. skating. Yeah. And finally, track. Track events. Pista. Yeah. So, excuse me, track events, they're done um, on the racing track. So, the 100 meters, 200 meters, 400 meters. Um, Motorcycles. Hurdles. Hurdles. Also, a track for Car vehicles, racing. yes. Mm-hmm. Athletics track. Good. Moving on to our phrasal verb. Um, two phrasal verbs to look at this week. Look up. And get over. And we've spoken before about phrasal verbs having a literal meaning and an idiomatic meaning. And uh, if you remember, take off, you can take off your clothes, which is the literal meaning, quitar la ropa. And a plane takes off, which is more idiomatic, despegar. Um, we also had pick up. I think you've spoken about pick up, Reza. Yeah. But can you think of any different meanings for look up? Sure. Uh, if you don't know a word, you can look it up in the dictionary. Yes, you can look up a word in a dictionary. <laughs> you can look up words on the internet. You can look up information and facts on Google. Look it up on Google. Although there's a verb now, isn't there, to Google. You yeah, can, they made it a verb. Let's Google it. And it's now a verb. But if you Google something, you're probably looking it up. Mm. Any other meanings? Look up. At the sky, there is a full moon. Physically to look up, literally to look up at something, to raise your head. Look up there, it's a full moon tonight, for example. That's a very literal meaning. Mm -hmm. You look up. And there's one more I can think of. Any ideas? Well, if things are looking up, that means they are beginning to improve or they look a bit better. For example, in Europe, the financial crisis is perhaps a little better now than a few weeks ago. It may be looking up. Do you think, you think the situation is looking up in Europe or is it still pretty bad? I think it's bad, but it is looking up. Things- it's marginally better, yeah. a little bit better. So it's looking up a bit. I think things are looking up in America. I heard that things are getting better over there. So maybe in North America, if things look up, they'll start looking up over here in Spain. Let's hope so. Finally, get over. Um, I have three meanings of get over. Any ideas? Uh, Well, the literal physical meaning, uh, you have to get over this wall Mm -hmm. to get into the garden on the other side, get over the wall, physically pass over it. From one side to the other side to get over an obstacle. Yeah. Uh, To get over something unpleasant that has happened to you Mm -hmm. could be to get over a divorce, for example. It's not Mm -hmm. nice to get divorced. It's it's difficult to get over a relationship. Get over a relationship. Get over the death of your friend. Mm -hmm. uh, Get over uh, uh, a drug addiction. You were addicted. Now you're not. You're getting over the addiction. So Mm -hmm. to get better after something unpleasant has happened to you. So it could be emotional. It could be physical. You can get over a cold. You can get over the flu. Get over a disease, perhaps. Yeah. Get over an operation. Exactly. Recover. Recover. Recover Yeah. Yeah. There's one more I have. I have... uh, 
Yeah, what could that be? Let me try to get over to you how important these podcasts are <laughs> to our listeners. Let me try to communicate to you. Let me try to get the point over. To, to emphasize the importance of something, yeah? To exactly. Get it over. Yep. For example, I tried to get over to Reza how important it is to study hard, but he didn't listen. I didn't listen. You didn't listen, did you? And I never got above pre-intermediate French. Now I could be advanced, but I didn't listen to Craig's oh, advice. Quel horreur. Quel horreur, mon ami. Oh, <laughs> bleu. <laughs> Zut alors. That's all we have time for on the Studia Francaise con Reza <laughs> Craig's <laughs> This episode, so remember, you can study more phrasal verbs in uh, mansioningles.com. Y voy a poner los enlaces, como siempre, en las notas del episodio. Send us an email or a sound file if you have a microphone. A mensaje de voz de MP3 attached to your email. And send your questions, comments, and sounds to Craig at inglespodcast.com or to Reza at BelfastReza at gmail.com and don't forget to give us a report, a review and some stars on iTunes. Thank you for listening thank you Reza for being here and we'll see you in the next episode. Au revoir mes amis. Au revoir <laughs> Viento A viento the music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later, licensed by Creative Commons under a BYNC license at ccmixter.org.